Hello, hello. Hey, everyone. We're so excited to be here. <laughs> um, OK, so we're going to be talking about two things, a little bit about OMSI, and then we're going to go straight into other box. Um, but just really quickly, OMSI, so we, we founded the studio in 2016. And this is some of the work that we've done during that time. Um, many people ask us, where does our name come from? So I'm just going to do a very brief lesson in Swedish. <laughs> it's a long word, isn't it? Um, so essentially, it comes from the Swedish word, um, dig, and that means mutual. And we like to think that this is the, the main way that we kick off every project. We look for that mutual ambition. And that's essentially uh, what we hope to achieve with every client. And our logo is actually the umlat from the longer Swedish word. It makes that nice little face. <laughs> but OMSI, um, it's, it's a big team. It's much bigger than Pedro and I. Unfortunately, we don't have pictures of everyone um, in the studio, from the studio tonight. But it's really nice to see some old faces from previous years as well. But um, enough about us. Uh, like Matt said, uh, we're, talking, we're here to talk about Otherbox tonight, which is uh, a social impact company uh, educating people, individuals, and businesses on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, it's an incredible brand that is you know, really legitimately uh, focusing on creating positive change in society. So I think when we go back to that sort of ethos of uh, that mutual aspect of the studio, this really felt like a great partnership for us. Um, and ultimately, what they do is they kind of do either in-person workshops or online courses that help all of us identify our own individual biases uh, and adopt more inclusive language and behaviors that hopefully can lead to a more positive uh, impact in the world around us and then that impact can grow and continue with time. Uh, the origin of the name is really interesting. Uh, I don't know if many people in the audience are, have, to, have had to deal with kind of visa applications or anything like that and in those you often get asked like your ethnicity and you have a very short list of possibilities and you have the other box that you can tick in, and in all those, those examples uh, are sort of excluded. So they wanted to take, appropriate that and turn it into a, a positive symbol or a positive platform. As exciting as all that was, and how as energetic as the whole team was, uh, the brand looked like this. And, and ultimately, it looked like the kind of tick boxing exercise that HR forces you to do at work, and you kind of like have to do it in your sleep, but don't care so much about. And that sense of urgency of their message uh, and the, 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 the amazing kind of like topics that they could educate us on were just totally getting lost. They were stuck in that kind of old school world of education and really missing an inspiration aspect of things to get people really excited and moved uh, to make a difference. So in order to help them achieve uh, what they wanted to do, which is to get people to take notice uh, and for them to stand out, um, we went through kind of our usual process, which roughly goes through strategy, really figuring out what a brand is all about, to then kind of, once that's defined, going into the design and making sure that it's all working really well. But the starting point really for us is always why, why do we exist? Why does this brand need to exist uh, in the world? Uh, I think until we define that, it's really hard for us to come up with any ideas or to judge uh, whether any idea is good. Um, and with Otherbox, I think the, the, the mission got, was able to be summarized in a really uh, neat and beautiful way, which is the purpose is to make space for difference, uh, to really celebrate that diversity, uh, to hopefully lead to a world that leads with love and inclusion and everybody can be themselves and accepted. Um, and from there, then we start to kind of like work and improve on all the little things that need to be improved. But sometimes when we um, kick off projects, um, it, there are things that we realize that sort of need to be addressed as well. And when we kicked off this project, we noticed that there was a little bit of tension around the name. And that was mainly down to the other box abbreviating their name and referring to themselves as Tob. So they would say Tob Jobs or Tob This. And that wasn't immediately clear for anyone who hasn't um, interacted with the other box before. The other thing was design thing. It wasn't great, <laughs> the double the double there. 
So we actually showed this meme of um, <laughs> it's just saying, like, it's your Facebook moment. Let's just drop the. And that convinced them. So then we're like, cool, great. Let's just move on. <laughs> that was easy. First battle won, which is great. Um, so then we got to, to start designing. We knew what the brand was about. We knew that we can make the, band, the, the name sound and look nicer. Uh, and then we explored two routes, which is something that we always do uh, to make sure that we can keep the work really focused, easier to choose, and then applied through as many touch points as possible to make sure that we're really stress testing those ideas. Um, this presentation can go really in depth. We're not going to go into all of it, but it's a bit of a snapshot of everything. Um, but we'll give you a little summary of each, each concept that we presented at that first stage. Uh, the first one, we were calling it Amplify Your Voice, and it was all about this idea of like, we want to amplify the voice of other box, uh, but it was also leaning on one of the teachings that, that you get from the course of this positive ripple effect that if I work on myself and I improve myself, hopefully I have a positive impact on the people immediately around me and them on the people around them and so on. So you have that kind of like individual to global change. And we love this idea of this ripple effect or this amplif and amplifying effect. Uh, and we thought it could be interesting to start to capture that in the brand or even in the brand name and just taking the O from box and kind of like almost like turning it into a big speaker or an amplifier that can start to kind of like create that ripple effect. Uh, which could give us a nice little shorthand, uh, which we could use to start to unlock the expression from motion behavior to then even talking about the companies that they're kind of amplifying or creating that positive change for to potentially also looking at how content can be treated uh, on their video courses or their social presence, kind of with like interesting transitions that all have that sort of like amplifying, rippled uh, aspects. To then even kind of like physical applications if they're doing in-person workshops, using some really beautiful kind of concertinas to create that effect, or even worksheets where people can kind of like actually learn about that in a really kind of like this, uh, you know, tactile uh, way as well. And then again, I think all of that can come together in a way that, again, just helps them create that confidence and that presence uh, that, that would allow them to have the impact that they needed to have. Um, and the second route that we showed was called Work in Progress. And this one was actually born from wanting to create something that was really, really bold, um, but also felt accessible. And it kind of referenced the learning model of, of examining, unlearning, relearning, and then acting, which we'll come on to a little bit later. But we were really interested in this idea of it always being work in progress, no matter what you learn. And we wondered whether there was a way, um, in the same way that Virgil did for Off-White, to kind of repurpose something, but in a more eye-catching way. Um, so what we did was we, we kind of took the sort of toolkit of shapes from um, yeah, this accessible sort of safety signage. And then we started to kind of play around with the layouts to see if we could kind of start to communicate and then really, we, we, were, like, we were using the word edgy, <laughs> but we, we wanted it to kind of be very, very bold and sort of arresting. Um, and what that also led us to was the realization that we could even simplify the word or the name even more and just ditch box and just become other box with a, with a box. <laughs> They actually, I mean, this is the route that they chose, so they, they <laughs> we, uh, second battle won. But um, <laughs> we were really interested about this idea in particular because their main purpose was creating space for difference, and we started to play around with this space, like how could we activate it in different ways? How could we communicate different things? Um, similar to the first route, like there was an opportunity to create space for partnerships. Um, that's the old Twitter logo. <laughs> <laughs> we created some accessible signage, um, and then you can kind of see it all sort of coming together um, in socials. So from there, we moved into development, and we sort of started to refine things a bit more, uh, different lockups for how it would all come together. We explored what the final toolkit would look like, what were the final icons. And this became really powerful, because we, if we go back to those education um, courses that we were trying to kind of recreate, we needed a, a system to be able to kind of show these diagrams and these learnings, such as the learning model. Um, this, yeah, as I say, this idea of always work in progress. Or their purpose, we are making space for difference. And then in addition to the icons, we started to look at digital backgrounds. Um, which, again, when you start to kind of put everything together, it becomes really powerful, like a limitless sort of system of different things that you can do. 
This was the ripple effect um, diagram, but done in this sort of root two way. And you can kind of start to see what the new dashboard would look like. And then we also talked about leaning into the idea of otherness and showing how they could kind of become a space for other jobs that wouldn't be advertised ad otherwise, um, other studio, that sort of thing. And then we actually did make the signage. We were just <laughs> so <laughs> this one um, was actually at the other box launch event um, last week, and we this one hasn't been made yet, um, but hopefully maybe soon. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. Laquena, we really want you to work with other box. <laughs> Laquena didn't do this. We ripped off her work in the hope that <laughs> other box would commission her. Um, <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, I'm going to... Stay tuned, yeah, no stay pressure. No, no pressure, no pressure. So now we're just going to play a little video that sort of sums up the work. Um, hit the lights. So of course, Otherbox is all about the community, and we just want to thank our own community that surrounded us for the, for the project, because it takes a lot of effort from a lot of people. So a big thank you to everybody who was involved, and to thank you all tonight um, for coming over and, and watching us uh, talk. If we, we spread it, a few of these little goats around the, the, the hall, if you found one, um, please come see us after at the break because uh, we've got a we started making our own coffee called Devil's Fruit. This is our little avocados. Uh, so if you have one, uh, you get a free coffee and some some nice goodies from the studio and come say hi.